Hello and welcome to Plus One to Gaming. I'm Chris. And I'm Eric. I'm Billy. Mark's offline today, but that's all right because we're going to be talking about our world building processes. And this conversation, the impetus for this is we're starting a long term uh, homebrew campaign. And part of that is we're using World Anvil to do a lot of our world building, our character development, and to be able to capture that and share that with the community. So, Part of that is like creating the stuff that goes into our world. And our process can be all over the place. We all have our own methods for creating and writing stuff. So today we thought it'd be fun to share our individual processes for you know, how we create the world around us and do that collaboratively in game. So how do you guys want to jump into this? We can uh, start with Bill, since you've kind of uh, conceptualized the world of AO. Do you want to give us a little bit of your, like, how do you go about creating an entire world from scratch? Because that can be a big task in and of itself. Yeah, so I'll start off with that uh, the original plan was not to create my own world completely. Um, I built a city. Um, I, we had an issue getting everybody together all the time, the same group of people. Uh, when we played D&D. So instead of making like this long drawn out campaign where every like switching out characters in the middle of it would be weird. I thought having like, um, like an episodic police procedural was the, was kind of the goal. So I made like a big city uh, and then everybody could just be like hired from like the adventuring guild. And then you could just swap out people as you needed because it would be believable. Like, Oh, he's off mm-hmm. today. This guy's going to work. So uh, that that got rid of the issue of of like our constantly changing, you know, um, Cast. friend group that was playing. Um, and then I decided to use that world to build a um, an overarching story. Um, and and so that's when you had to actually realize, like, oh shit, like I need it, the a city alone is not enough. Like, uh, mm-hmm. originally it could have just been a city and anywhere we could use like, uh, Faerun or any of the other forgotten realms slash, um, D and D property worlds. Yeah. And the city could easily have been water deep. Yeah. That it basically was, a, a like a, a city that I could create things. So I didn't want to like use a city that already had rules because mm-hmm. I didn't want to be like handcuffed, but I could always just tie it in. The, oh, it's, it's right next to Waterdeep. It's, you know, um, I could use it where it's kind of like the Springfield for the Simpsons where like it's we all know where it is, but like yeah. it's not officially Springfield in Oregon because is it Washington, or Oregon? One of the two, um, because so if they need an ocean, there's an ocean. If there's a mountain, there's a mountain. If they need. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of what my idea was, like whatever I need for the story, it could be there because why not? It's my world. I like that. That's so you chose, you started off instead of creating a whole world, you started a lot smaller, plopped down a city Mm -hmm. as your like focal point. And that's cool because it gives you this like flexibility, like this pivot fulcrum for Mm -hmm. lack of a better term that you can easily move and adapt that to based on the needs of the story, the characters, the players that are available even. Mm -hmm. And then that city almost takes on its own like character. It's almost its own character in and of itself. Correct. That was that was the goal to have like just as we needed, we could pop something in there, and then it, it like it gets fleshed out, uh, but not like in the collaborative sense. It's just the I, I don't need it yet, so I'm not going to develop it because I don't want to put something in stone and then need it to be something different later. Um, yeah, and this kind of like dips a toe into another conversation we might have at some point, like the DM's journey. We've mentioned this in the past, just like how much do you prep? Mm-hmm. And I think we can broach that a little bit during this conversation because, Bill, to your point, like if you don't need it yet, if it's not pertinent to the story or what the characters are doing, don't waste your time. You don't need to waste your time, rather, creating that stuff. And it yeah. could hurt you because then you have to retcon if it, oh man, it would have been really useful if I would have made like the king's advisor this guy, you know, when I already have the, I already made the king's advisor for no reason just because I wanted to. Um, and so uh, you're, like having all of the story filled out kind of handcuffs you. Um, and same thing for like, char- we, we talked about character development, same thing, like having your entire character fleshed out uh, doesn't give you any room for backwards growth. Um, yeah. I think that's that's a good point. Um, but I'll, 
so after I had the city and we decided to make this whole world, um, the first thing that I did was I wanted to think of what type of world that I wanted. Um, and that's kind of the, I, I'm not a trained um, creative person. You know, I'm an engineer by trade, which is very numbers and, you know, math and all that stuff. So creativity is not, um, it's not my key. It's more problem solving. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I, I wanted to like what the, the main feel of the world was. And what I decided was I, I like the concept of exploration. So I wanted this world to be kind of in that early Renaissance area when a, all of a sudden the world opened up due to technology or magic. And we had a very small world and now suddenly it can be expanded immediately. So that's kind of like where I put it in like, like the Renaissance era, mm -hmm. what I was talking about. Like we have the, the enlightened era where all of a sudden we have um, scientists and, and, and magic developing these new things in a rapid pace uh, that allows for natural world expansion. Like you're, the characters are learning about the world as much as the, the world itself is learning. Like it's not like, um, fish out of water where you have to explain yeah. why you don't understand what's outside of this wall. Nobody understands what's outside of the wall. The goal is not only you, but everybody is now looking to, um, you know, to make these discoveries and explore past the known world. And so once I got that like core in it, um, I kind of just modeled everything after that. Like what would be kind of a cool story and what would be a cool, um like how would people think if they were in this world like mm -hmm. what religions would they have um and and stuff like that so i mean there's it's not really fleshed out yet but that's kind of the the main drive that i have is trying to fit it in this in this world of how how would people in this era how would they feel and how what would the, what would be their goals and what would be like the overarching like societal viewpoint here like what's important what's not important and so uh, everything after that can just be molded once you have that i think start big and then get smaller yeah uh, which is the opposite of what i did before which is start smaller and get big because mm -hmm. um, if you already know you're going to start a world like get the feel of the world first and then everything else kind of you'll know right away like do you want to put this in here ah, it just doesn't fit and then just change it until it does fit yeah so that was me nice so you brought up a couple other points I just want to like highlight so we can distill some value from those from there. Um, one is just the the values of the people that live in the world. I think that's a really good way. And there might be multiple layers to that. Like the people at the lower end of your stratus, your social stratus might have different values and perspectives than the people at you know the middle and upper levels. So you have a unique way and you had mentioned like oh i'm not a creative person first i disagree i've seen like the stuff that you've written and i would argue that you are a very creative person we just have different expressions of, of creativity but being able to take those values and say okay i can put on this mask and see through this person's eyes and make some decisions that makes the world feel really lived in um as does this executioner's dais that you put in the fucking map somewhere I I'm did, like click yeah. on our map to like see what oh cool there's like more stuff in here and I see an executioner's dais. It's it is still <laughs> the Renaissance era. They are still they cutting off heads. Holding to old yeah. ideas. Ideas are changing, so they have new and old, and it's that that uh that interaction between the two is I think a very interesting story. Like you're were, you're were talking about like where the the more common people, the poor people, they probably don't care what's out there because it doesn't affect their day to day. They're just trying to survive and make money and 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 just it, it doesn't matter what's outside, what's beyond that that uh, mountain range, as long as whatever's out there doesn't come to me, I don't care. Um, yeah. And and so and then you have the people that are afforded, the the people that have the the privilege of kind of being rich and bored. Um having that the drive to discover more just because they're bored and then you of course have you know some agents that want to you know 
enhance their standing, whether wealth or power, uh, kind of like, you know, colonialization and, and, and those kind of people, the uh, conquistadors. And yeah. so I, I just used, you know, I'm, I'm a, I, I like history. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not an Eric level expert in history, but I, I know what I know, uh, kind of the general path of the world. And so I kind of just, um, used that as a, a parallel of, um, uh, of ideas, but just through an, oh, also magic exists. Does that change people's like behavior? Probably not. Does it change their like motivation? No, it's just another tool they would use to get the end goal um, that already exists. I think the discovery piece is something I'm really excited about for this campaign of being able to like explore and poke into these uncharted, undefined war areas. And then also back to your uh, point before, like if this is sort of a split world, like kind of at a maybe an inflection point, it seems like. Mm -hmm. It might be cool to be able to shape that a little bit. Like, oh, what if we like see someone about to get executed and we're like, hey guys, maybe chopping off heads isn't the best idea. And like, maybe we could change the perspective of a whole culture. <laughs> We've never really done that in a game. And I yeah. think that could be a fun, you know, if it comes up, it could be like a fun way to, again, sort of explore and build this world together. Because uh, I think the last time we saw a public execution, Eric was in a Strahd game, and that didn't go well. It did not. We, we, did to, well, we didn't try to stop it, but yeah. one of our characters did, and then we all got in trouble for his actions. Oh, was that the guy that played for one one session and then left? No, that was a different time. This Same was campaign. The, with the speech impediment. Uh, yeah, we kept getting hamstrung in that game by, well, this is what my character would do. I'm like, well, your character would not be alive still because he apparently makes really stupid decisions yeah. especially in a world filled with vampires but that's yeah. neither here nor there <laughs> all right so billy do you have any other um little nuggets um in terms of world building do you where do you pull inspiration from um well uh kind of like what what eric talked about during the stealing ideas from other borrowing ideas the, the last podcast um it's just as I as I listen or as I watch, I get um, I get ideas. Oh, this is a really cool idea. So whether I listen to a lot of um, like fantasy audiobooks, I, I read a lot of those. But then I also like I'll watch TV mm -hmm. uh, or I'll I'll play a different game, and I'm like, this is a cool concept that I can use. Um, and so that's that's kind of the idea that that I uh, that I use. So. Um, there is um, a book that I've been reading by an author called Brent Weeks, where like light and color is kind of like the main, the, the the magic, um, and so like people harness colors to do magic, and each color has like its own type of magic and what it does. Like one's strong, one's flexible, mm -hmm. um, and it's it's a cool concept. Uh, um, I believe. The, I forget what the first one was called. The, it, the blinding knife is one of them. I'm on the third one, um, but it's 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 a cool concept. So when I went to redo all of the realm or all of the uh, the gods mm -hmm. and the the planes, which I thought was going to be a big chore because when we decided it wasn't Dungeon Dragons anymore and we couldn't use their licensed and uh, copyright uh, copyrighted copywritten written yeah. Uh, gods and and realms i was like oh man this is gonna be terrible but then i realized that i could make it more of of that and so i thought like what do people see mm -hmm. and then like that kind of in uh makes their their god belief so i made their beliefs based on elements because that's the thing that they see um and so it's kind of like then the same thing in the colors where the elements have their own uh like the stats that they control uh like and then kind of i try to make it work as good as it could like a like fire is charisma like fire of passion and like uh a constitution is ice because like you know you have to be you know mm -hmm. uh, and and water is strength because you know the strength of like the, the tide you know you just can't or a flood like the nothing is stronger than that and and on and on and on if you can and you can read all about that in the um in the uh, world anvil site 
uh, based on the gods. And then I just gave like each each like element its own god to represent it. Um, and so that was kind of where I got my idea. So that one was kind of like a a tweak of that uh, that color based uh, magic. And so I was going to kind of base this on element based magic, which has been done before, but like. Um, I, I think it's a cool concept. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And you put like tables in here that we can roll on like some random tables. Yeah. Which I think is cool. What happens if you do that? Roll to three. That's Dormont. Element of fire. Realm of the flame. Attribute charisma. Common form is a paladin. Like this just adds like the, the gods that adds texture to the world. And it's fun because you, you created this and you posted this and that was really exciting. So then like as we're adding to this world together, one of the projects I'm working on right now is the prayer of the pantheon like what prayer do people say um kind of i'm stealing that directly from george r, r. martin i was gonna say like yeah the seven yeah because they have that prayer and it's it's just like mm-hmm. this common thread that just makes the world a little bit more lived in because they you know people curse the you know the seven or they or the they worship the old gods mm-hmm. and not the new some worship the old gods and the new it's it's the really cool God. yeah so i think like seeing like being able to build off of each other mm-hmm. i think is a really cool just facet of this type of play yeah so bill it's interesting you mentioned something when i was like so during covid i lost my job and for like nine months basically just played guitar <laughs> and got a lot better <clears throat> and tried to learn a lot of music theory Um, and there's, uh, a thing in music called a mode. Um, and it's just a scale, but there's something special about it. And there are seven of them. And while learning them, like they all have different characteristics, even though they're, they're basically, it's a little hard to explain, but they're all like the, the scale, just one note over. So like, instead of starting here, the next one would start here and end here. And so it's the same notes, but starting and ending at a different note, like changes the, uh, the feel and like the characteristic of the mode. Um, and their names are like Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, Locrian, like Aeolian. And I was like, these are gods. Like, yep. yep. (laughs) Like, and and I never like we haven't run it in a campaign or anything, but like I've tucked that in the back. Like if I need to make something like like of these seven gods, like brother sister deities, and like they all have their own personalities, and like their names are like derivative or not even derivative. These things are derived from those gods. Like, but it's one of those things like you said. Like I'm just existing. I'm doing something completely different. But always, I'm like tracking. Like, what can I, what can I store in the back of my mind for later? Um, that could be, you know, something cool. Something I to love to that music like idea. Yeah. I, so I, I, I didn't know. Like, is it, are these bard gods? Are these just the gods? Um, and like, maybe the like one of the themes of the adventure is just musicality like i don't know do do i have to nail that theme that hard (laughs) or can they just like you know whatever it is but um yeah i i mean that was over a year ago and i still like that's in that i I maybe have it written down in a note in my phone but it's it's tucked away it's saved for later well like um i think it was the silmarillion however you say it and Mm -hmm. um lord of the rings like that that world I think is like the original creation of it from their gods was I think through music, if I'm not mistaken, like the equivalent of angels kind of sang mm-hmm. into existence. And then there was, um, Saruman who I can't remember what his original Sauron, who I can't remember his original name is, was like the discord in like weaving the song of discord mm-hmm. through that. So like, I don't know. I think the music thing is not really super prevalent in a lot of fantasy. And I think that's cool to have this like, world of harmony and then you have opportunities for you know disharmony to come in or discord to like ruin that balance that's really interesting i didn't know that because i I tried to read the silmarillion and 
fucking gave up. It was in like high school or junior high. And the first like this guy, son of that guy and the forever. And I was like, no, nope, not for me. <laughs> um, so I didn't know that, but that is interesting. Cause like discord, um, like there's easy ways to do it on guitar that, that like sound really. And speaking of thematically, I was like writing a song about like two people not connecting um, and putting discord in there because like, and music is so weird because we don't like really know why but like certain notes just do things to your brain yeah. um and when the wrong notes happens you're like oh that it shouldn't have been there like shouldn't it have why like it's a note it's perfectly serviceable why shouldn't it be there we don't know it just doesn't sound right um mm. so there is interesting stuff and i was in that like thinking about the gods and stuff being musical things like music is magic. Like it, it elicits emotions from you and we don't know why, like that's magical. Um, so similar to like the weave in, uh, like D and D like, like the, the notes and stuff are like part of like, that's magic. Um, and maybe similar to like colors or like sucking on metal and miss binders or whatever that book series is called <laughs> like maybe music is what makes magic in this world um so like easily you created a new magic system <laughs> and like you created new gods you've created a theme of like discord versus harmony because i was learning music theory when i was unemployed like <laughs> You put you put these things together, and, it, and if you're always kind of looking for through lines, it actually isn't a lot of hard work. Now it takes several years because <laughs> because like if you're not like actively looking for it, but you can also you just find a nugget and like okay, this will work. Let's dig into that. Um, go ahead. and also like one thing I think that might be a common thread between all three of us. Uh, Eric, I know you do this, Billy jump in with your with your thoughts having a notebook or some kind of collection folder file mm -hmm. por portal whole of uh the whole the whole thing i don't know what I you want to call it but like you ha having a place to dump all this stuff and collect it is really big because otherwise it's just going to go into yeah. your head and then out into the air and forgotten yeah, yeah i have uh, a bunch of google docs like D, D characters and every once in a while i'll go back and look through and i'm like oh that's creative i forgot all about that person <laughs> um like i'll be hiking and i'll think of like a lot of it is like the shower time like when i can't engage in anything else and your brain starts to wonder hiking is one of those for me um i'll create so, sauntering. yeah i guess sauntering i'll create whole hike or plot lines characters like whole story arcs and like i'll get back to my car and have to like <laughs> put in my phone real quick i'm like i'm gonna lose this shit on the way home um but yeah, it, like capture those ideas because you never know, like you could easily bring them back to something, something really cool. Yeah. It might, might not be the, the first thing that you had in mind for it. You might even find a better way to insert it. It might be yeah. more subtle, more nuanced, but just as satisfying. Put, put it in your, your bag of holding it. I use Google, Google Docs as well. Cause I have, uh, you know, I have it on my, my phone's an Android. So getting Google Docs on that is really easy. And then, uh, uh, it's one of the few things that I can easily share between like my work computer, which is a mm -hmm. government protected, no USB, you know, you can't share a lot of stuff in between it. Uh, but Google docs, I can pull up Google docs, my government computer. So like if I'm, um, working and all of a sudden I'm like, listen to a podcast or listen to music and something comes to me, I can just open up, you know, Chrome real quick, go to Google docs, type it in, um, you know, while I'm at work and, yeah. and it, it works really well. Really well, Most because yeah, you never know when you're going to use this. Yeah, yeah I have awesome. something. I have at almost all times two um, different logins for Chrome. I have my work Chrome and I have my like personal Chrome. So at work, same thing. On um, on my home computer, same thing. So I can switch between work and and personal pretty easily. Um, but yeah, on my work computer, I'll, I'll log over and and I have Google Docs and I'll or and world anvil and like all all those things that i can i can hammer stuff out in real quick um and work on so eric what are some of the other like world building we are we've covered in an, an entire episode mm -hmm. how you steal stuff i do uh, steal. uh and, and, everybody and, does again 
we talked so, about it. That's totally fine because it's yeah, how we like work. I, I was listening to that episode and it's weird because like and I'll do this even listening to other podcasts. Like I still want to talk. But <laughs> I do it's that too. Been recorded. You know, so I can't right. no matter how much I yell in my car, you can't hear me. Um I wanna so there I have now a chance to talk about it and I apologize for hijacking this. Dungeons and Dragons itself feels like oh yeah so 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 many of their concepts are not original like they're all like, a lot the of them based on folklore a lot of them are based on tolkien like tolkien stole tolkien didn't make that shit up a lot of it a lot of it he did of course um but like living in england they have like elves and fairies and like they have these like legends he took from that D and D takes from so like again just another like level of like don't feel bad if you're gonna steal concepts the game you are playing ninety eight percent of its shit is stolen <laughs> concepts yeah, yeah. Um, Mark said so. it really well in that episode if you're uh, steal the details and the concepts but don't mix them together in the same context or something to that yeah. effect and like that was pretty much spot on yeah. <clears throat> But yeah, but, you're right. No. Like it's all everyone's standing on the shoulder of giants. Exactly. And some hide it better than others. But like again, D D, like I don't think that was the point was to hide it. Like we know you want to play all the fantasy genres you've ever read. Here they are together. <laughs> Blend it up. Here's your toolbox. Do exactly. with it what you will. And that's like do that. It's it's why it's the spirit of the game that it was built on. Mm -hmm. So um yeah, go ahead. Um I there's a subreddit called world building and they have a lot of like really good resources for like nuts and bolts building out worlds. Um, what are some of your favorites? So because like, you know, like we talked about the way that like, I think Bill and I both will kind of conceptualize like just from like sparks of inspiration. Um, that that's a premise and this is the same for me with like like writing like plots like i'll think of a premise and i'm like oh that's that that would be an interesting story but i don't have the story i just have the premise um so with worlds same you know uh, okay a world based on music the gods are musical cool that's a premise i don't have anything else um <laughs> pardon. Cool. there's one world building techniques grapes and it's an acronym Geography, religion, achievements, politics, economics, social structure. Um, and they go through, like, how does the region and climate affect characters in your story? Geography. Um, and then there's, like, some bullets. Primary exports, imports. Like, so it really, like, digs into some stuff that, like, me just thinking of, like, ooh, that's interesting, a musical worshiping culture. I don't know what the primary export and import is. You know, I don't know is what natural resources. What's that? Is it instruments? Is it parchment to write notes? Like, is it something that facilitates that conversation? Like, it's really but cool. It's like, to think whole, like, so here's the thing, though. If if there are only seven gods and they are musical, the whole world would like. It's not just a city. So, like, I, so you have to yeah. like. You don't have to think of that stuff. That might be too big for your story. Who cares? Like, what's the export and import of Harbor Town, Harborton? We don't know. We don't. We don't care yet. But, yeah. Micah, that'd be cool but we might need to like in the next adventure or whatever it might be doc focused we like we might need to solve something and be like wait a minute but they're important like like sometimes these things do matter um and you may run the risk of what like bill was saying of like writing yourself in a corner and saying like oh their main export salt and then you know whatever reason later we need to change it to something different and we're like actually <laughs> their main export is this um if it is salt we should do a salt marsh salt, uh mines of the salt marsh yeah module because that's <laughs> a really fun adventure lost mines of salt marsh salt marsh but so i don't know there there's like interesting things on there so that's one of them grapes and you can more than likely search like grapes i don't know if we could post it we could probably post it um i'm gonna grape you, you guys ever see that skit <laughs> whitest kids you know <laughs> i'm gonna post it just so it's not <laughs> it's really funny um there's another one they they posted called the cultural iceberg 
So the concept of an iceberg, like only 10% to the top and then everything else is underwater. Um, and it was like surface culture, f- food, music, holidays, dances, festivals, like stuff like that. And then deep culture, communication styles and rules, notions of like courtesy and manners, attitudes or children work approaches to courtship religion. So like there's just all these like interesting visual tools that they they put up to kind of help take a premise and like actually hammer it out into like you know you said a couple times Chris like a lived in world. Um that's really cool. I had these tabs open and I started them the other way, the opposite way that I should have. So I apologize. Cause one of the other ones <laughs> is like just types of worlds. So there's like fairy tale, heroic, noble, bright, gilded, and grimdark. So Bill said something earlier, like what type of world do you want to live in? Like what kind of thematically story are we telling? Um, a lot of times, like you could start with this and it, it just, like you, you don't have to necessarily go from like this list and say like, ah, I think I want to do a noble bright. You may have stuff in your head already, but you don't have the vocabulary to describe what it is. And then reading these, you're like, oh, yep, that's me. I fall, you know, either right smack in that or maybe halfway between these two. Um, and it's and okay it to blend. Me, what's that? It is okay to blend. Like, don't feel like you have to pick one. Like, you can exactly. You want a grim um, dark, but also kind of bright noble, like you might be able to swing that. Yeah. Um, but if you're having trouble, like, I do think it's similar to storytelling, world building. Like if you're having trouble keeping your, your theme, you know, like these people are like this and these people are like that, but that feels disjointed. Like knowing some of the structural, like tools and words and, um like diagrams like may help you make that make sense Uh, it may not be necessarily wrong that like maybe the dwarves are grimdark and the world under the world is like that and the surface world is a heroic world you know what like you can make those parallels but sometimes like you may lose the the theme of each if you don't know exactly like the tools to use to create them um, yeah. So I am I, similar with writing stories and characters. Like I'm, I'm very into learning the tools of the trade to apply to it because I think that that helps focus my like erratic, like ooh and this, ooh and that, ooh and this, um, which was is normally my style. Again, like learning the modes of guitar. I didn't know those until I was 35. <laughs> I've been playing guitar since I was 16. Right. Um, can we drill down on something first uh, yeah. real quick? Cause you brought up these different um, like themes of worlds, like skins or flavors of, of settings essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, and I want to talk about like why that is important because it's also true with, like you said, world building and story te- storytelling and story writing. Mm-hmm. You have to have what the theme is in your mind and you have to define that first. And that yeah. the reason why that's important is it tells you what's true about this world or what people believe to be true. And that gives you an anchor point or a compass to then like navigate from. Cause if you, you know, are always traveling with this true North, anytime mm-hmm. you're presented with a situation for world building, you can look at that in relation to your compass in relation to the theme of the world and what's true. And then it's a little bit easier to, to make the determination. Does this fit? Yes. Does this make sense in the world? And I think defining that high level sort of like skin flavor, whatever you want to call it, Mm -hmm. theme ahead of time, just gives you a better sieve to kind of filter things through and make sure that it feels right for your world. Yeah. I, I, so it's again, interesting. And like learning the tools of the trade and how to specifically with like storytelling and and like screen playwriting, um, that is like one of the biggest lessons that they teach like know your theme every single theme should be thematic like you don't need to state your theme in every scene but they should all fit it should all make sense um and we've talked about plates like times like book of boba fett i don't know what the theme is and things felt disjointed and different things um whereas like other shows that 
that you ask that question over and over and over again, like they stay more consistent. Um, and even if something is like counter to the theme, make that on purpose also. <laughs> like, like that can be interesting exercise. Like that can yeah. be doing that in, in the right way can really add uh, impact. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, so like I, I linked you guys the those three things that I was talking about. But if you're if you're doing a heroic world, like a lot of, um, I would say that like D and D stuff is between like noble, bright, and heroic worlds. But you want like a grim, dark society. Like they are kind of like a foil of your world. Like make that thematically important. Like um, that could be even a, just a town or a city that the party happens upon too. Yeah, that lives in this grim, dark, you know, type of. You, know, you mentioned the dwarves underground. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't have to be the entire world. You can segment a little bit too. Exactly, or just a culture. You know, you've got like, um, like the, like the. I mean, we talked a little bit earlier about um, Game of Thrones. Like in Westeros, they worship the Seven, except like the North still worships the old gods a little bit. And the Iron Island worships the drowned gods. Like they have different cultures, and that can, like, even the type of world. So, like, the ground, the Iron Islands is much more grimdark than, you know, the rest of like Westeros. Mm -hmm. um, those types of like stories or worlds don't have to be the whole world. Again, it can, it can be a set of islands, it could be a culture, it could be a city, um, it could be a roaming band of like, like uh mercenaries or whatever and their their societal structure is like this um so there's just i don't know there's a ton of resources out there to help you because like world building is so much more complex than character building um because you're basically doing it over and over and over again on like massive scales so so and, and it's response like a character is responsive Mm -hmm. But a world is even more so because that's the place they're actually living in. So everything has to shift and move and adapt around them yeah. and react to the inputs that are given by the party. Yeah, and sometimes it doesn't, but that's still part of it. Um, like sometimes the world you can't fix it, but you can try. Like so, it, so it all like dictates that too. Um, I do like the way that like we traditionally as a as like a team us um have decided to build things like we may have like i'll come up with an idea and i'll build a little bit and everything else is up to us like i don't want to wall you all in i know bill did the, the exact same thing he built the city he built like the region and he's like fill it in we'll figure it out like collaborative world building is to me like way more fun than reading billy's novel about how his world works like and billy's a great writer and he writes interesting things mm -hmm. but it's also fun to have a hand in it as well and to do it together um bill i would love to hear your thoughts as since you kind of like planted the seed of this world and now we're all in there fucking it up <laughs> making yeah. our own. i should no. say that but we're in there with our you know with our trowels and our pruners you know and planting other types of seeds um can you just share like your thoughts on that process what it feels like to you like what you like to plant and what you like to see grow and cultivated by other people yeah so it um it's hard to give up creative license of your creation number mm -hmm. one is i yes. spent a lot of time on this and um a lot of thought and a lot of effort and like if you go into the um the world anvil you'll see that I, I, a lot of time just typing and trying mm -hmm. to make things there's a ton uh, of content always, in there already yeah. yeah i'm always adding to it um so like when somebody puts something in there like your first re reaction is like oh i don't that's not what i was thinking like um because it's it's alien and it's foreign from what your concept is but then you have to like step back and um and and see how does that does it actually negatively affect your world or is it just foreign because you didn't come up with it and you're giving a small slice of your your baby to someone else like uh I'll, I'll give a prime example like uh i you know in in my mind this is more of a it's i, I don't want to say uh, 
it's it's a, a serious world. You know, like there's serious politics and serious interactions. Mm -hmm. um, and our all of our characters are very goofy. Yeah, like like Chris is a one. living cat, and you know, Omarin is on the straight and narrow. I think Omarin yeah. is the only one that like if you would think that would fit into this world perfectly, like mm -hmm. without any changes, Umrin belongs in this world, but the other characters also belong in this world. Like, and it's yeah. hard to like, to think about like, how, how do they belong? Like you don't say, Oh, they, they don't belong. Like, how do they belong? Like, yeah. and I think that that's, that's the key is that like, you have to uh, like, like, uh, all of the a lot of the things that Chris has been adding to it are like cat themed because he's a cat. So like a lot of the myths are cats. A lot of the characters are cats. A lot of the things are cats. And like, you know, it's like, but that is a part of this world that is like cat themed because he's a cat and the other cats. And this is like cat myths and cat stuff that his character belongs. So it's just as much of the world as anything else it may not be a major part of the world you know mm -hmm. not a lot of other characters may believe in cat hala you know i don't think because that doesn't because... mean that cat hala isn't a part of the world it's yeah. just it's a it's as real as it is it's extremely important to lord wizard claws it's more important to ward lord wizard claws than like the pantheon of the gods because mm -hmm. he doesn't follow those gods so who gives a shit for him yeah and so like i think that's the main thing is that and the world isn't just one thing. There's a lot of people in the world and it's it that world is different for every single person. So there's not one thing that belongs. Um, if you're a noble, the world you see the world a lot different than if you are a you live in the slums. And mm -hmm. no one world the, the world of the nobles and the world of the slums are different, but none of them are more right or more wrong or more yeah. belong. Um and the same thing, like goofiness and seriousness. Like you could be a goofy character, and there's some goofy stuff that happens. But like that, if you are a goofy character, like you are, like you are making the world more goofy. Uh, and that doesn't mean it's bad. It's like you're bringing the lightheartedness to the world. You know, you mm -hmm. are the like, um, you are that light that you know that lightheartedness that yeah. that world needs because you know for your on that. Uh, on that same terms, uh, you could have a character that has no joy, you know, uh, and he doesn't see any of that goofy stuff. But I, I, that is the main the main thing that when you build a world and you release it out for everybody else to, mm -hmm. to uh, you know, to collaboratively enhance and create and use that, um, just when you see something and you think, like, this doesn't belong, like, don't don't think how it, whether or not it belongs think how does this fit yeah because it will fit it had like you can make it unless it's something some completely goofy like off the wall but even then you can always make it make it fit like how does this fit in the world like um like I, yeah it doesn't and, have and to that be... is like it's a hard skill to get behind uh mm -hmm. and i think that that's like the collective writing style of of everybody is going to make it more fun because if it was just me, I wouldn't have a lot of those goofy elements in. Cause I'm very, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at those politics and those interactions and like the actual physical interact, like, like, you know, when I'm building the geography, like I'm thinking physics mm -hmm. of how does this geography fit? Like, how does, you know, like that's a, there's a mountain Ridge in the middle of it. And it's a rain barrier, kind of like the Rocky mountains where it's keeping the rain on one side while the other side is a desert because yeah. as the clouds lift up, they release their water. Like that is a physical thing that happens and that is part of the world. Um, so that's a lot of times I'm focused on is like how I like this concept. How would it actually work? I don't want it to just be, you know, water to appear from nothing, you know, like a Pandora, you have waterfalls. Where the fuck is that water coming from? Yeah. Like, you bring up an interesting point though, Bill is sort of leaning into your strengths and such that like, I would never really think about the geography and how that geography impacted different areas and like okay. the mountains and their impact on you know the wet and dry areas and plains and such i'm more of like i want to create you know myths and i want to create little pieces so yep. it's we're all gonna you're, you're, i think there's gonna be a tendency for you to gravitate toward what you're most comfortable with mm -hmm. whether that's more like logical or you know geographic like whatever skill sets you're best at yeah um you'll probably find yourself being pulled more in those directions and go billy you 
brought up, I think one of the most important skills for collaborative world building is sitting with discomfort and sitting with other people's ideas and letting go of control. Yeah. So not easy, especially when it's like, this is kind of your baby in a sense, like you really, uh, um, just stated this in a weird in a way, in a term yeah. is the right word, but you did, you, you incubated this, you created a lot of the, uh, the, the seed world for it. And then we're coming in and adding things. Um, stuff like Cat Hala is really like nobody else in the world knows about it except one character. And so it's in there because it is, like you said, important to him. But it may or may not have any impact on the story aside from mm -hmm. that drives Lord Wizard Claws. And that's enough. Like it's one little thing that I wanted to put for my character that may or may not turn into his goal. But it's cool to be able to have a place to put it. Um, and still not it have and still not have it affect the overall flow of the game flow of the world in a negative way because i think that's the last thing any of us would want is to be able to is to pop something in there that's like well cool this is world ending Thanks. yeah yeah it, it is so bill mentioned like I, it's so weird that you you think about this but like the rain shadow stuff with with uh <laughs> mountains anytime i see a map that has like a huge mountain range and both sides of the mountain range are like the same topography. It drives me crazy. It's not how it works. <laughs> it's not how it works. It's not how it works. Um, See, whereas I just don't, don't give any, any shits. Yeah. About that. I don't know. Like, like in like seventh grade or something, we learned about that. Like, that's why there's deserts on the other side of mountains. And I was like, cool, that makes sense. And, and for, that's the only thing from that, like earth science class that stuck with me. <laughs> and, it drives me crazy when people didn't take that same class with Mrs. Penfield um, and didn't learn that important lesson. They're missing out on crucial. Um, but so what's interesting to me, like Kat Hala is like, Chris is like Wizard Claw is the only awakened cat that we know of, at least maybe the only one in the whole world. Um, so he has all of these like things about like cat kind and cat culture that like, He's probably an unreliable narrator. <laughs> like, the, like Chris said, this might not exist. Um, and cats might not, like, the cat culture stuff, like, might not they exist. might not want that. Billy brought up a great, really great question, a hard question mm -hmm. in our uh, character development episode we did of, like, do other cats want this? Like, I never yeah. really thought about that, me as a person, but, like, probably not. Probably not. And I think that's even better. That's way right? more fun. That's uh, way more fun. Yeah, it's so much better because now you have like a like a delusional, like delusions of grandeur character who like wants to like liberate his people, and his people are like, "Oh no, we're we're good here." And also, yeah. I don't know who you are, and I can't speak. You speak English, and that's weird. <laughs> like, yeah, just so because like, it doesn't exist either doesn't mean like in. In our world, in this the real world, yeah. um, like on paper, you know, the Thetans are the say are just as real as the angels. Yeah. One is a crazy LRH person who got a bunch of people to believe them, but because they believe it, that's that exists. That's the other story of the BT tens and all that other weird shit and Z Zena, Zenu and all that shit. Zenu and Jesus are both in existence equally. Yeah. Which one of them is true? Personally, neither. Yeah. But but that's the thing. They're both as part a real part of this current world as each other. And so, so then that's also is Cat Hala. What? Also yeah. then is Cat Hala. Yeah. yeah. Chris exactly. wrote it down. Cat Hala is just as real. Just if one person believes it, it's it exists. Yeah. And so one that, fictional character believes this world. <laughs> We're, a little, we're maybe a step away from it being on the same level, but yes. Yeah, yeah. no, I mean, that's, that's true. <laughs> um, and, and interesting, because, like, I don't know, and maybe it is, like, my personal bias, but, like, whenever I create a character, I put almost no effort into, like, what is their religion? <laughs> Every character is an atheist. I, I, all, I, it's not even that, like, they're an atheist. It's just, like this isn't a factor yeah, this isn't true. what i think of when i create characters like mm -hmm. what drives them because it's not like i would have to go out of my personal experiences to like pull that in yeah. and i don't <laughs> um so like
No. Oh, what a for an unfortunate way oh, to get frozen. Great picture. Oh no, he's <sighs> gonna come back. Yeah, no. there he is. He glitched. He phased I, out. I must have also. Your audio uh, got up too. Fix your mic. Now. Yeah. It always puts me back into the wrong settings. Yeah, you sound like you're in another dimension. There we go. How's that? Perfect. Yeah. I just have to change the mic thing. Um, yeah. So, so using something like, you know, I don't think about religion for my characters. It would probably take me a while unless it was like an over, if, if like religion is the point of this culture, like, you know, they're like, fascists and their religion is like based around this you know it's like something that like that's the point i think religion would take me a long time to get to if i was creating a world whole cloth um so that is part of why i use like these like the grapes technique like religion is the r in grapes um it's the second one and i would like and it makes me think of things like that so like these types of structure help me a lot because otherwise you're going to get a world full of fucking atheists who didn't even think to ever invent gods because it never it doesn't matter to me yeah. it it's a uh, like religion is one of the main motivators of people yes and so like when i made my my world i that was the after i made like the actual the layout of the city the very first thing i made up is like the the religion and because i can take a step back Mm -hmm. I made multiple religions because you're not going to have one religion. Like I yeah. want more. And those are just the two that I came up with. There will be more, whether you yeah. make up with them or other people do, there are more religions in this world because we haven't like, even gone to the other side of the continent yet. We've we gone haven't. like and 10 miles. Yeah. We're very <laughs> much like still controlled. But like when I, I like making religions because it's like, I can think critically of like, Mm -hmm. what would people worship like what do people like you know like religion is finding answers for questions that you know that you can't otherwise find answers you for. can't otherwise yeah. answer you know and as we develop answers to them um religions change because we, oh now we can answer that you know we don't yeah. have to uh you know lightning's not thor's hammer we know exactly what lightning is but yeah. Do they understand what lightning is? And do if half of them do and half of them don't, are they going to have different religions? Probably. Or different yeah. views? Yeah, because some of them are like, well, I, I don't know. That's that's magic. This is a god that's lightning. And the you know the actual wizards or like the smart people in the world are like, no, that's just a buildup of ions due to, you know, the, how the world works. It'll be interesting to like, to, as we push through and sort of carve in to find this world as a team, as a group, um, finding those distinctions between like magic sort of science for lack of a better word in this term. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the religions, I think that'll be fun to sort of bridge span those different, um, topics. Sure. Yeah, that is interesting because like we are playing in a world where like, I don't know, actually, to be honest, are the gods real? Because that was one of the, the things when you first got me into D&D, &D, that was like hard for, again, showing my bias, like hard for me to come to grips with. Like, the gods are real. They are like, it's not like here where we don't know. They are real. They affect the world. Uh, that that took me a long time to like internalize in my play because I remember I wanted to make like a cleric, but I'm like I don't want them to believe in it. These guys are all goofy. Um, <laughs> I did like I wouldn't believe in these, so he wouldn't believe in these because I couldn't make a character that wasn't just me. Um, and Billy's like, well, that wouldn't work. Like your magic wouldn't work because a god gives you your magic, and I was like. Well, not this one. Warlock. <laughs> Not me. This one warlocks for yeah. me. Yeah, I mean, well, I, that is, so weirdly enough, the next, like, ten characters in me were all warlocks, so that made more sense. Yeah, well, like, if, if you remember... Awesome, gives powers? Cool. If you remember the, uh, your bastard party game, uh, the paladin was Greg Rat. you know? Yeah. He was, um, the lead singer of Bad Religion was the awesome. paladin, which is yeah. hilarious, because he was the <laughs> atheist paladin. Um, because yeah. all paladin, all you need as a paladin is strong conviction, and yeah, who has stronger conviction? <laughs> than right? Oh my yes. gosh. <laughs> That's so meta. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was that was really really hard for me to internalize, and, and still, I don't think any character I've made 
has religion been a big part of their like yeah. trying to think if I played a, I've not played paladin or cleric and I, I I think I might stay away from them no you played paladin with levo but I don't think she was really like devoutly religious she was I, more like I, I levo. yeah <laughs> I didn't share anything with, with that character um it was like a I've lizard god to that, too right yeah, so it, yeah. Was, it was more primal, and I think that's weird. Like, because the pri- I don't know, the primal ones make more sense to me. Um, I but, that I'm listening to that episode that or that playthrough. Yeah, the, that one. <laughs> Levo is one of my favorite characters. <laughs> it was interesting because again, like, not what I would have chosen. I just I rolled for everything. Like, what race are they? Well, all right. What gender are they? Okay. Like, <laughs> I didn't pick anything with that some, character, and had no, some like, really fun quotes. What they look like after. So that was kind of fun. It was a fun experiment. Um, it was a fun game. But so there, there's something, and I might... I don't know how to say this. I might, like, this might not necessarily be, like... I don't even know if PC is the word, but kosher. Um, there, there was a strange thing with me. At being a person who never really went to church, never really believed, and kind of, from my point of view, like, sees through... The Matrix, for lack of a better term. Mm-hmm. Colonized peoples adhering to the religion of the colonizer is always very strange to me. Like, so there's, yes, that's problematic for a lot of reasons. It's, it's really, and I, I've obviously never like gone up to somebody and be like, that's the colonizer's religion. Like, what about your old, like, why do you believe, like, I would never do that. But, like that's the religion of the slaver. Why are you like very like it just feels weird to me. So like that kind of track in our world, like I want to pull that in. Because then I get to actually like explore this idea and not offend whole like, subcontinents of people. Mm-hmm. Um or like question people's faiths or whatever. Um so like with goblins, like they are kind of the at least in my We can change this, but like what I saw them as like, they were the original peoples of this world. And then when like the human races came, they were kind of subjugated in their lower class now. Like, do some of them follow the colonizers religion? Is there an old religion that like maybe a like subset follow of like, I don't know. It it is really, I meant like the the beginning of the idea of this. And that opens up so much like so if you establish this cool old religion mm-hmm. like what there's an opportunity for zizel to reconnect with his roots and to exactly. go on this like really amazing personal quest that could be like more character defining or give him some really cool mm-hmm. growth opportunity like that's really exciting yeah and, and that's my character and i'm excited for it <laughs> so that's that's actually like what i think is really important in this because like i can make that up and if it, it doesn't affect our characters cool like who cares but if you can build your world in a way that gives those types of like character journeys. Like that's, that's so much more fulfilling. Yeah, it does. It just, it, it makes it your world, our world. Like you, you, yeah. you all have your, we all have our own like little um, DNA and fingerprints over it. And it just makes it so much more fun to play when you have these different connections and then to be able to go along that journey with Sizel mm-hmm. uh, and experience that stuff. Um, it brings the party closer together too. Like uh, if that ever happens, I'm, I'm really curious to see how it'll play out. Okay. I pulled up, I pulled up Bill, something that you had posted. Cause I think this is another excellent way of bringing more texture and depth to your world. Uh, you posted a thing in our homebrewing thread of uh, common sayings, profanities, curses, mm-hmm. and positive derogatory titles. Um, I think things like this, idioms, um, are, are such a great way to to do this. And so I think this was a genius move on your part, Bill, to to add this. Um, like, what do people say? Yeah, <laughs> and how do they talk? Um, so like, I couldn't think of anything cat related, so I actually pulled from goblin culture mm-hmm. to create one so i think it's really fun to like start putting yourself into different um you know pockets of society and like what would they say how would they talk how would they do that um i don't know Bill, can you can you like comment on that a little bit yeah um the uh, something that 
ties the culture together and that is very noticeable and like makes mm -hmm. it evident that they're in the same culture as so if you have similar like not just a similar actual language but yeah. similar um usage or word usage and um there's a phrenology i forget what the word name is yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. like we have like there's you know like australians us the, the british we all use the same language technically mm -hmm. on paper even like states different states yeah mm -hmm. but I you know like, it, yeah if, if somebody's saying like you can when you put on like when you're acting to be like a uh somebody you you use certain words like it's not just the mm -hmm. accent but if i'm going to canada i use a lot of a you know and yeah. uh and I mean, like the accent is one part of it, but it's also those little words like to say, you know, y'all, you know what I'm mm -hmm. talking about. Or um, if I'm if I say bloody a lot and or mate, you know, yeah. like, yeah, just even just are, saying that word without an accent. I know what culture. Yeah. I, I, you say, hey, mate, like, you know who I'm talking about or this. Look at this bloody pool. Um, yeah. You know who I'm talking about. Yeah. It, and so like that links this culture and it could just be regional. It could be. Mm -hmm. And, and and so I think that having our characters or other characters use common phrases will like it's like an anchor point to that mm -hmm. world to say like they actually they live in this world. This is a lived in, thought out world where you know common phrases are you know are spread throughout. So like it's not that you're just this this character and this way that he's being played could just be popped into any other world and it would not make a difference. Like he is part of this world and he belongs in this world and because of yeah. those common those phrases and it's just the easiest quickest thing to do yeah. um and and i think that it's like a good starting off point that when we're playing our characters if you use like you know instead of saying like god damn it you know you say like god damn it or damn it. some of the other phrases that i say like you know like uh you know he, he's damned me to hell there's no hell mm -hmm. you know so like we do need to decide what what the equivalent to hell is in this world. The the shade. The shade. The shade. The is the, the, okay. The shade. The shade is, well, there's the not shade. really like a hell where spirits go mm -hmm. that I developed. Like the shade is like the the dark negative plane. And yeah. So like, and so that's kind of the, the language that they use. But like, there's not. Like they believe that these planes are actually exist, and wizards can go to those some of those planes. They may not be exactly the same as they are, but like, mm -hmm. there's not a plane, as you know, where like there's like a hell plane where a bunch of tortured souls are, and there's not like a heaven plane, yeah. you know. Okay. And so with so these no elements here in this world, yeah. So like with the elementics, which are like the main religion, it's kind of like only of what you can see, and so like. You know, there's conceptual like heaven and hell, but like can't see it, and so like yeah. it's more of like, is it one of the like I see fire, I see ice, I see wind, you know, yeah. I see the sun and, and I, I see the moon, the gods, and so those are those are the realms and those are the gods. Yeah, nice. so it's very. It's an interesting question to answer in a in a world where you can travel through planes. Like, yeah, would they believe in a heaven if they're like, well, no, because we can travel all the planes and we didn't find one. Like, maybe, maybe it's. They're like, well, because it's hidden from your view. Yeah, maybe you like, just can't might be there. so that that's similar back to what you were talking about, where like the enlightened people might be like, no, we can't measure it. And then there may be a religion like that's the point. Like yeah. so I don't know. That's interesting. Yeah, and that's, like, and that's that's levels, that's layers. Yeah, there may again, be just... upstarted like Christianity kind of thing, like where they <laughs> they like in the beginning they were like a cult <laughs> like they were a sub like a sub cut off of another religion and da, da 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 and they didn't fit into like the pantheon of the roman gods and or the greek yeah the roman gods and they didn't fit into like jewish culture anymore so like they were the upstart like that could be interesting what would that yeah. look like in a world where you can literally go like wizards can go to the plains yeah. and george uh game of thrones did it too when they had the um i can't remember what that do you remember near the end of the series where there was lord like that light. one what's that the lord of light was it the lord of light finish your thought well there was the guy the 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 guy that kind of basically came in and set up like his the sparrows that's oh, what yeah, it was yeah. the high sparrow but he the was high part sparrow. of the seven 
but he did, it was more of like a radicalization of the yes, seven it was a radicalization in. yeah it wasn't like kind a of, new religion it's kind of it was neat though to see this like radicalization cell pop up and mm -hmm. cause some havoc like it'd be neat if that happened in our or if it doesn't that's fine too but like these are opportunities yeah and creating yeah. multiple religions yeah. creating multiple of these things that have different perspectives they have their own agendas they have their own goals of what's mm -hmm. right and wrong that and gives your world like yeah. if it just happened and we're in our like little mansion solving a ghost story and it doesn't affect us like okay but if if it pulls us into the story and like gives us like character development growth plot growth whatever like that is so much more than just having it but you have to have it first <laughs> like you have yeah. to think like oh this could be cool like you know we could have a little upstart of a religion that maybe does believe in things that are unmeasurable what would that look like okay let me park that because maybe later i'll pull that in to affect my characters because that mm -hmm. like in the long term is the point of this again we're not writing a book like mm -hmm. we everything in this world is there to potentially affect our characters uh, and i think the the distinction there is that potentially like don't get so attached to an idea where you have to have it yeah. manifested yeah because it's annoying it's annoying for your party it's annoying for your dm mm -hmm. um if you like yo, you got to figure out a way to put this in or else like no don't yeah and and like doing all the legwork of inventing the religions and inventing the planes and stuff like that like makes it feel more lived in but those things can't affect us like mm -hmm. they don't necessarily have to but they can yeah um, well and like with the with the gods mm -hmm. we get the chance with our characters to determine whether or not we follow those religions and then to some degree like how much they affect us yeah they might still affect us regardless because the gods have their will and might oppose that upon us yeah and then that gives our characters an opportunity to be like oh maybe if i don't, at least don't accept these gods i have to accept that they exist you know and that's an interesting growth moment i don't know yeah. what Faisal does yeah and the thing is i don't we don't know well as of now your characters don't know that the gods exist yeah like you know that like priests and clerics have powers but so are they harnessing uh, energy that they don't understand and con and attributing it to a god mm -hmm. and that's that you know it's not going to it may be that that's the case it may be that there are gods that are giving them power um mm -hmm. i don't i got i mean i have ideas but I'm not going yeah. to tell you, and it's you. If you don't, I'm not going to tell you something your character doesn't know. Yeah. Like that, you know. Yeah. Like there are reasons to believe in the gods because mm -hmm. magic exists. But Zyzel um, harnesses magic he doesn't understand. Yes, and is, is that a god-given gift, or is it just he's like we all harness a lot of things that we don't understand. Mm -hmm. We still, to this day, don't know how a fucking bicycle works. <laughs> yeah. True story. Yeah, we don't know how a bicycle stays up. We've any time we're like, oh, it's due to the the wheels and you know gyroscopic motion. They make a bicycle with tiny wheels, works. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's because like the front wheel leads and it, the other back wheel follows. They make a bicycle where it's reversed, it works. They any time that they think they realize where a bicycle works, they've made yeah. a bicycle where that shouldn't work, and it still works. We on paper don't know how a bicycle works. It's angels. Bikes are magic. It's angels. Yeah, we yeah. like, uh, and there's a bunch of things like that. We just we know that it happens, but we don't understand. Like, and yeah. you'll read that if you read scientific paper. Like, we don't understand the method, mm -hmm. but we know that it works. We've tested it, and this is repeatable, and it works. We have no idea how yeah. this process works or the method. We just know that it happens. That terrifies me when we, like, fly planes. We send people to space. Yeah. We don't understand how a fucking bicycle works. Yeah. Yeah. We, we know how planes and spaceships work, though. Do we? Yeah. Lift. I'm just trusting yeah. people know that. No, I trust that people know how the bikes worked. Yeah, there's a there's a bunch of things that are like we just we know the process we understand the process but we don't understand the mechanism like yeah 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 the mechanism yeah. or why I mean obviously so, we understand the process because we can mass produce them like and dial in even like this one will shave off like point four seconds of your mile time or you know whatever like so the measuring is there but yeah the the understanding of like oh. What I don't know what like part of physics makes this stand up yeah. and go. Why? Why can that you? Fascinating. Yeah. Why can you balance on a bicycle when it's moving, but not when it's standing still? Like, yeah. Why? Nobody knows. Can stand on a bike when it's standing still. I mean, it's people, just, yeah. A lot of people can like do the little hoppity doos. Um, no, Chris just like, unicycle like a light, and he'll just stand there. It's it's unnerving. Very weird. 
but yeah, I mean, some people are, it's easier, I should say. It's not it's impossible, much, but yeah, yeah. Of course. I can't do it. But yeah, but that's a, that kind of thing is that like, just because you don't understand something like magic exists, but they don't understand, like mm -hmm. do scientists try to understand it? And like when you were to hark back on what you're talking about before, are scientists and people studying magic, are they different? Or are they just trying to understand forces that they mm -hmm. don't understand? Like, is somebody studying electricity and somebody studying magic different? So I think that that's interesting. And it, I think that, of, I think, yes. I mean, it depends on like, because in like D&D, &D, you can just read, you can just study to become a wizard. Yeah. Right? Right. Um, I don't know how much in like the lore that like natural ability and, and all those types of things play into it because it's not like God given, like clerical, <clears throat> you study and you learn and you can, anybody can become a wizard. Apparently we should put like the small caveat. I believe there are for some cl classes, minimum attribute requirements yeah. to do that class. If I'm not mistaken. So yes. I don't know if wizard's out. one of them. Like, you need a minimum of X intelligence yeah. to be able to be a wizard. But I think, like, like, there might be some check boxes that you have to meet. For, for sure. Like, it, it, a lot of times that key, that comes into if you want a dual class. Like, you can't dual class mm. unless minimum you have strength requirement. This. But I mean, and so I would assume that those requirements probably hit with. Yeah. Uh, the print but the thing is like they tell you what the most important stat is unless you want to be me and you purposely make your worst stat the prime stat i i mean why couldn't you i mean for certain things like wizard maybe you can but like you could really you be a paladin that's just really bad and yeah. is just not charismatic at all you could would so you he could. be able to work half of his spells maybe not yeah so that so that's the interesting thing because i think of this a lot because i know a lot of people who went to like grad school to study like one specific author. And they're like, you know, for like Spain or whatever, there's like a seminal author from the eighties who's written, you know, 40 books or whatever. And they're like literature, they're not like pulp or whatever. So their entire education is studying this one author who might still be alive. <laughs> like you can go talk to him. And that to me just feels so weird. I'm like, you could write books. <laughs> instead yeah. of like but they choose not to they don't maybe they don't have or want or go down the path of like i want to be a writer like this person mm -hmm. i want to study and teach other people about this person yeah. so like are, very easily we could have people who study how magic works but are not magicians we that they do in this world that they, exactly those are the people that like there are people that study magic that mm -hmm. their goal is not to master how, like, how to best cast a fireball, but where does that fireball come from? Yeah. And I mean, but that's in everything. Like, you have people that do it, and then people that, like, study it to optimize. You know, that's... Yeah, you like, like the seekers, and you got, like, the doers. I mean, yeah. but in, in academia, like, that is academia in general, is that, mm -hmm. like, for, uh, like, you have research, and I, I can speak most for, like, engineering and stuff. Like, there are people in academia that that just they are they do research and they just study things on paper they do all these paper things and then you have people that are you know look at applied yeah that, that research and how does it apply and yeah. like and i don't want to do any of the research that's why i didn't go to grad school i'm not interested at all mm -hmm. i want to do the application and that's where yeah. that's the path that i'm going down but it's the same like you're both engineers but you're like a you have your phd very specific in this and you're trying to research these things you have the people that use that to you know for uh, to yeah. apply and i think that with magic it's the same thing you're both wizards but you could be a wizard then you look through his spell book and he's got shit spells because you know yeah he, he could be a re uh, his like application of it is he good. doesn't give a shit he only yeah. uses like does the fireball actually improve his abilities no he's looking at like he doesn't really need to cast the spells he's just maybe testing them out but mm -hmm. he's studying magic mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. The interesting you put it into engineering. So, like, I work at an engineering firm. Yeah. Technically, I guess. Technically, we're a manufacturing company, but we're, like, 40% engineers because we're still making new products. Yeah. Um, and I've been, like, 
advise against, like if you see somebody with a PhD in engineering, probably not going to fit in here because yeah. we are not theoretical. We are, we are applied. We are making stuff today. Yep. And like, we have a couple of PhDs. Um, we had one or two, but they were always the leaders. Exactly. Like, which makes sense. Like, engineers. Like, yeah. but they then, are, they've also yeah. had a decade or two career ap in application. Yeah. yeah. Um, like fresh PhDs. Cause I like going in, I saw somebody with a PhD and I was like, Oh hell, this is like, this guy wants to work here. He's got a PhD. Holy shit. And they're like, Oh yeah, they're not. No, we don't want them. <laughs> They've never done it. it. We no. know people who have done it. I can't teach them how to do it. Um, but even like my CEO has told me, he's like, we need smart people. We need people who understand how an electron works, right? Cause they're electrical engineers. So like down and we have electrical engineers, that like similar to what we talked about earlier, like certain points are like, we don't, we don't know why it does that. It does it. Yeah. We know it doesn't. I can make yep. it do it, but I don't know why. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like small enough, it just becomes magic. Um, What's that saying about technology and magic? Yeah, yeah any technology of like sufficient complexity yeah. is indistinguishable from magic. Yeah. That, that complexity is pretty low for me. Yeah. Like, for, I don't understand how people, a like, lot of stuff works. <laughs> Unless it's like in your field. Yeah. I, whenever you hear that phrase, I hear it being said by Spock in the civilization game, because that was one of the, uh, like when you, when you researched a, one of the skills mm -hmm. and it, that was one of like the, the quote after you've yeah. done researching it. And it was all, um, Leonard Nimoy. Awesome. That, I forget which, like, that's a good which game. It was maybe Civ mm -hmm. four. It was an older yeah. one, but it was awesome. Oh man. You gotta yeah. find that sound bite and play it. But, but I yeah. think that that theme is like pretty similar to what we've been talking about, like magic wise, mm -hmm. um, like for, for like the people in the slums, I don't care. Is this magic or is this technology? Does it help me? Nope. Fine. Does it not affect me at all? I, then I like, I don't care. Like, yeah. and then, to, and really like, again, today, like the, the people at the power company could be casting lightning bolt and dig like the power lines avatar style avatar style and i don't know the difference when it gets to me and that might be a secret <laughs> it might just be like yeah they go to wizard school um all the wizards work at the power company they're paid well you don't know about them don't worry like doesn't affect my life at all one way or another lights come on um it really like it's the the same thing like on a weird level yeah it's a fun way to think about it um let's let do you guys want to finish up with maybe like your favorite world building exercises before mm. we uh wrap up because i think we're probably coming up to the end of this conversation so one of the things i do again to steal and cheat um i made a game that we never played that was like the the, the concept was like what if no animal ever went extinct but humans didn't exist so we were mm. like smart animals but they were like dinosaurs and rhinoceroses and bears and all sorts of shit like pretty much everything pretty much everything Not cool. every, but like all animals and dinosaurs and for the map i found a map of pangea and i inverted it and flipped it and i was like no one's gonna recognize this <laughs> <laughs> that's all you have to do that's perfect. That's perfect. We have uh, so I I bought that Wonder Home campaign that Eric, uh, Mark had posted a while back. That might be a good setting for that. Yeah, I had like um, a lot really of cool. cool. Like it was like, and it's it's silly. Like they're talking rhinoceroses and shit, but like it was political intrigue. Like different nations, like the Bear Nation is Russia, and they they are militaristic and like traditional, and they want this. And like the Monkey Nation is like you know whatever the Lion Nation like. They all had like pretty characteristic things, and like I had no plot or anything. <laughs> it was it was purely world building. Um, I want to play Madagascar Five E. Yeah. Let's do it. Um, and then like underground, there's the spiders, and like they're you know like the the flood or whatever, like the, the existential bad guy. But like I saw something that allegedly George Martin did that with. Westeros, it's it's like the British Isles flipped and inverted, uh, which made me it was like brilliant, like because a lot of it, like he had the the maps in the book, but a lot of it he's just talking about it, um, yeah. and it is like 
if you, I've seen like overlays of them and they are like, yep, there's even Hadrian's wall or like, is, like, like it is pretty much exactly that. Um, oh, that's funny. You don't gotta, you don't, cause like geography might be really good for Billy. I don't, I like, and you might enjoy doing it. If you enjoy doing it, there's so many tools out there to like draw, like incorate. There's just hundreds of them. Um, and that's fun. Like I've tried to do a couple different things, but like, I don't, I don't know. It's not what jives me. So like a lot of them, I'll find maps flip and invert and no one's going to recognize. And that goes with our theming or, or our, uh, like stealing and borrowing flip and invert it. And no one's going to recognize it. Okay. So Eric's, uh, biggest, uh, world building exercise or tip is flip, invert and steal. Still stealing. It's all like, yeah. it's all about time stealing. to go whole cloth. Yeah. It's, it's tough. Bill, what do you do for like your, your world building exercises? What's kind of like your go-to? So I don't have, like I said, I don't, I don't have the tools cause I didn't like, I was never trained on, on tools for that kind of stuff. And I never really looked into it. I kind of just have been winging it my whole life. Um, but I, which is okay too. Like that, yeah. that, absolutely nothing wrong with that. My, like, I just focus on like interactions, like, Mm. trying to figure like just think about two things and how do they interact if they interact like whether that's through through physiology and through actual like geography or whether that's through uh climate like how do they interact uh like these two things and then make it if you want them to interact a certain way like i want these to be adversaries or i want these to be different and then figure out a way to make it that it would naturally tend to to be that so like if you wanted like a um i i wanted two of the city states basically um in this world to kind of be not adver adversarial but kind of be like at odds with each other like competing mm -hmm. and so i was trying to think of like what would be like the two main things that people would compete about um and one is i mean it's always the economic might and military might and that's yep. okay. Well, then one of them is an economic powerhouse. One of them is a military powerhouse. Done. And that, and that's why. Like, there. I mean, there could be other things. Like, oh, there. One could have been a religious powerhouse. One could have been economic. I mean, there's a bunch of different ways. But like, make it like think about what you like the interactions you want to portray, um, or the interactions you think would happen, and then kind of like back trade like, um, you know, work backwards to figure out how to make that happen or just put some stuff in there and then figure out afterwards how does this like if this was here how would this affect the interaction between these two like interaction between the these two cities these two cultures these two like the left half of the world and the right half of the world if there's that mountain range down the middle how does that make this world yeah well you have the haves and you have the have nots like you know because water and, I like and, that. and that is a big interactive point so that that is kind of the yeah the relationships yeah. and I, I relationships or interactions however you want to the word it like how like that is the key is that everything should have a relationship with everything else nothing should be isolated and everything is woven together um and then, then you create like this web this inter interconnected yeah. web where if you pluck one string you might be able to find it the the effect of that somewhere mm -hmm. else which is really cool. And I think that's like the goal, the ultimate goal of world building, right? Is to build this interconnected web that's tied together and, and feels cohesive. Mm -hmm. Cool. I think, sure. thank you for sharing that tip. I think that was a powerful one of just like start, start looking at things in their interconnectedness or the, mm -hmm. the relationship to each other and the relationship to the greater world. Um, one thing that I've been trying to do since we've been playing this game is like when we start mentioning stuff in game, trying to be better about creating that within world anvil as exercises and then just to as like a daily writing practice i've been trying to basically like roll a d 14 i think there's like 14 usable categories within the world building mm -hmm. so trying to just like a random like okay i'm gonna roll a d whatever oh it's a 12 okay i have to write a myth yeah and then i can just like okay well what kind of myth could i write and then just move on and just kind of like piece little things together, even if it's not a lot. Um, so I need to post a bunch of those things, but just trying to like write stuff, even if it's, or especially if it's outside of my character uh, and just trying to create things that will add some more 
depth to the world, but also like I need a prompt mm-hmm. because I'm just, if I look at the list of stuff, it's overwhelming. Like yeah, it is. there's so much you could write about. So by rolling a dice and just locking myself into something means I have to do it. And then I can, you know, with some of those limitations, I feel like I can focus a little better. So that's what I've been trying to do to add some depth to our world anvil page. Yeah. I mean, we talked about tools, world anvil. I know we keep mentioning it is turning out to be like an incredible tool to like house all of these ideas. It's nice to be able to like visit and have a place to kind of like just steep yourself in the world a little bit. Cause mm-hmm. I jump in here and just try and read so that when we do play, I can, you know, bring all oh, that God spurned thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I can at least try and start pulling from this stuff and pulling from the, the, the lore that you know, we've all created together, but mostly Billy. Started, but I, I've tried to slow down cause I would just do it. Um, but then it becomes overwhelmingly mine still. And so that's why I've yeah. tried to like purposely scale yeah. back. Um, like, if I if I have an idea, I'll just build the framework for it, but not filling anything out because I don't want it to be my world that you have a few ideas in. Um, so that that's yeah. why it's you see that I've slowed down a lot because I was I was going too fast. I felt that, and and more of just I know you're trying to populate yeah. and get stuff yeah. out there as soon as you could, and I respect yeah. that. Um, thank you for doing that because that's a lot of it's a lot of work that you put in there. Like I, I see all these articles and say, "Fuck, Billy's been busy." Yeah. But I also want to make sure that we as a group, uh, as part of this table, like we also are spending time in there and creating articles together. Um, and maybe we, you know, as we're playing and we get back into our sessions, like maybe we do a session of play. And like we said before, we take, you know, a small session after the game to do some, a little bit of world building um, together. That would be fun. Yeah, that's interesting. Cool. All right, guys. Well, I think that's probably it for just world building together yeah. as part of like collaborative storytelling. Yeah. I'm going to play the intro real quick, unless you guys have any, or outro, if you guys have any last parting, parting no. shots. No, I think we're good. All right, let's roll that outro. Again. All these fucking hotkeys. That's it for this week's episode. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already, and head over to plusonetogaming.com for more live discussions, actual plays, character creation tips, and more. You can also join us live every Sunday on Twitch at twitch.tv slash plusonetogaming. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll catch you next time.